Hello and welcome back to my stamp studio. So today I'm excited to share a new class to go card kit using the Nothing's Better Than bundle. The Nothing's Better Than stamp sets on page 91 of your catalog and it's a 26 photopolymer stamp set. So you're getting lots of stamps in this set. Uh, I love it because it has these nice little bold words up here coffee, cocktails, cookies, chocolate, and then you also have these little fine line sentiments which you can mix and match to create quirky little sentiments for a unique card that you may be sending. It also, along with the words, comes uh, the images that go along with the bold words up here, cookie, and it's a two-step stamping set in that it has the fine line images and then it has a shaded image that you can stamp over the top of it. So there's the cookie. You also have a cute little cocktail glass with an umbrella and a lime, and those also have a little two-step shaded stamp that go with them. It also has the inside shaded uh, second stamp with these cute little ice cubes on it. You get a little coffee cup with a shaded second stamping here and then these cute little lines of steam that you can put on your coffee cup. And then these cute little chocolates here with another little uh, shaded stamp to stamp over the top of those. You also get this cute adorable little single star here that kind of coordinates and goes with the coffee cup but is fun to use by itself and I'll show you that here in just a minute. So the Nothing's Better Than Stamp Set coordinates with the Love You More Than dies. And these uh, coordinate nicely with the bold words of the stamp set, chocolate, cookies, coffee, and cocktails. And then they also give you another word die in here, love you more than, so obviously those coordinate nicely with those, and then you get four cutout dies with that coordinate with four of the stamped images of the cocktail glass, the coffee cup, the cookie, and the little cluster of chocolates, okay, so for a set of nine, so a really nice little bundle, I think. Uh, the bundle sells for $46.75, okay? So before I show you the Class to Go Kits uh, cards, let me first show you some other cards that I created with this fun set. Let me tell you, I had no problem whipping out lots of cards with these retro stamp images, whimsical sentiments, and coordinating dies, which made it very easy to create lots of fun cards. So the first one I want to show you are ones that I made with the coffee theme. So this is on a Whisper White base with a little bit of smoky slate used with the dainty diamonds embossing folder. This is Burm uh, sorry the Pacific Point Blue cardstock that I white embossed the coffee mug and that cute little single star on. And then uh, just a couple of the coffee cups there stamped and cut out with the dies. And then the words I used for this one are today's plan, consume, coffee, and be awesome. I think that's so fun how you can mix and match those sentiments. And then I threw just a few little rhinestones on down here. But this is having a very retro look to it. The next one, go along with that retro theme, uh, I have a Granny Apple Green base, Poppy Parade Red run through the dainty uh, embossing folder, and then a piece of pool party down here that I just randomly stamped coffee on. And then I punched, stamped and punched out lots of those cute little coffee cups and just kind of stacked them and thought those looked really cute like that. The sentiment I used on this one was, because adulting is hard. So I thought that turned out really cute. The next one uh, is a little bit more plain, a little simple here with the coffee cups just kind of stamped down the side here and colored in with some fun little vintage colors, and then the star as well, scattered about. And then I use the word coffee, and then you make everything better. I also punched, uh, used that um, postage stamp, I'm sorry, postage punch that we have to uh, create those cute little looks, and then the little word window punch as well, okay? So those were the coffee sample cards I made. Now the chocolate ones, I went a little bit softer colors with. I went ahead and did uh, 
Blushing Bride for my card base here, and I paired it with Cinnamon Cider, which I didn't think I would like at first, but I love it, especially for a chocolate-themed card here. So went ahead and stamped some of those cute little chocolates, punched them out with the coordinating die, and then did the punch out of the chocolate and the kind of day with a little bit of that DSP back behind, a little scallop to add a little softer look to this card with a little bit of the cinnamon cider uh, cotton twill ribbon there. thought that was really cute too. The embossing folder I used on this one is that ornate uh, garden one, the flowery one back behind. Then the next one, uh, I used uh, Smoky Slate as my card base. Uh, I used some of the uh, Gorgeous Grape uh, cardstock, just stamped chocolate down it, and then I cut out just Whisper White and A Day Without Chocolate and just left that at that. I just think that's a cute little sentiment there. And then some cute little chocolates cut out here, popped up on a dimensional of an oval stitched die. I also threw on one of our new little square vellum, uh, which I actually cut in half and made some pop up here and some down here to make it a little bit bigger. Threw on some of our pearls here that I uh, coordinated colors with blends to make them uh, match completely uh, there to finish it off. The next grouping is cookies. And this one, uh, just kind of a place on some chocolate chip cookies, stamps a little panel here with some chocolate chip cookies on it, have a few little extra uh, chocolate chips over here, cookies just scattered about. The word cookies with the basket weave on the bottom, punched out with that postage, punch again, and cookies, you make everything better there. And again, just use the basket weave uh, over on the right-hand side and finish it off with a little bit of our linen thread then around it. The next cookie card is a old olive base, and I used some of our Mango Melody cardstock run through the textures uh, embossing folder, which I inked up a little bit. So that's why it has a little bit different look to you there. It has a little bit of more color in with it, the texture of the embossing folder. And then I thought it would be fun to make a cookie jar, and what better way to do that than with our Mason Jar Punch and the coordinating embellishments. So I used the words love you more than and made a little cookie jar here. And I hope the camera's picking up. I actually put a few little cookie images back behind in there to make it uh, realistically look like a cookie jar. I thought that was cute. And then the last one, uh, ones I created with the cocktail uh, sentiments. And this one is on a Whisper White card base. I threw in some of the um, basic gray, run through that dainty diamonds embossing folder again. And then I used some of that Pacific Point Blue again with the embossed little white star on it. These cute little cocktail glasses, obviously the stamp set makes it so easy to stamp those and punch them out with the dies. And then I use the word, today is a cocktails kind of day. Love how you can just mix and match those sentiments there. The next one is on a basic black card base. And then I took a piece of four by five and a quarter inch watercolor cardstock. And I white embossed the cocktail glass all over it. And then I cut it into four pieces. So you can see where the colors change here. There's four pieces here. I took our water painters with the reinkers and just kind of got some pretty colors on there. And then I basically put them back together on the front of the card like a puzzle. And I just thought this created kind of a nice, fun, tropical, uh, whimsical look here. The words I used were today's plan, cocktails, and I'm pretty sure tomorrow will be too, which I thought was really cute. The last one I have to show you of my samples is this one. This one uses the rainbow glimmer paper, which I'm gonna talk about here a little bit later, but I love the colors that it achieves. I use the cocktail word dies to punch these all out of the different sections of the rainbow glimmer paper. So I achieved all those pretty colored uh, there and I based it on a piece of Bermuda Bay cardstock and with that black underneath them they just pop right off there a uh, couple little cocktail glasses colored and paint uh, colored and uh, popped on there and then I used because adulting is hard 
I put some rhinestones on here and actually colored those with blends so that they would coordinate perfectly with this project. So uh, it looks beautiful, I think. I love how this one turned out. All right, so those are my sample cards to show you with this bundle. Uh, now let me show you the Class to Go card kit. And in this case, card. And I'll explain that here in just a, a little bit. But I loved this card so much, and I was sure that all of you would as well, that I decided to change things up a bit for this class. So for this class only, you will have the opportunity to make four of these fun interactive cards, okay? So here it is. When I sat down to make cards for this class, I had a hard time choosing cocktails, chocolate, coffee, or cookies. I thought about making one for each of them as part of this class, but then when I came and saw an idea, I came up with a way to incorporate all four of them into one card, okay? So first off, my envelope I wanted to show you. I took that cute little uh, star and just stamped it in the coordinating colors that I used for this card on the flap just to give it a little bit of uh, pop there. And then I came up with this little wheel card. So I can come over here and turn this. And with these sentiments, today's plan consume, I can choose whichever I want in my little window here. And then because adulting is hard, I decided to throw those sentiments on there too. But I can choose from cookie, coffee, cocktail, or candy. I just thought this was a cute way to use all of them in one project. So again, in this class, you will be able to make four of these cards. Now, obviously you can change the colors up uh, with the little images in here, but I'm also going to give you the opportunity to change up this glimmer paper here with our rainbow glimmer paper that we have. And so you would receive one that has a little bit of the green and the blues, one that is the purple and the blues, and then one that has the bright pinks with a little bit of the purple down below. And then the one I'm gonna show you today actually goes with the yellows and oranges of the glimmer paper. So let me take a chance here to kind of talk about the rainbow glimmer paper. It will be an add-on item to this class, and I'll talk about that here in just a little bit. But it comes in sheets of 12 by 12. You get two sheets of this. And I think they run about five, 550 maybe, which sounds kind of expensive. But remember with glimmer paper, you don't need very much to make an impact, okay? So uh, a little bit goes a long way with this, but it is just gorgeous, isn't it? So for this class, I just wanted to point out that you would be able to get uh, four sections of this to show off all four of these colors so that when you go to make your cards, you will be able to uh, have cards that represent every section of that rainbow glimmer paper. So it kind of changes them up just a little bit because they all are very similar, okay? All right, so uh, with that, let me talk a little bit about how my class to go card kits work. The ordering dates for this kit begin today and run through August 26th. What is included in the free class to go kit? So you would receive supplies needed to create four cards. One of each of these cards here. You will receive enough pre-cut scored cardstock, papers, embellishments, ribbons, and envelopes to complete the kit cards. I do need to charge a $4 postage fee. The kit will be mailed to you from me and any Stampin' Up! products will be shipped directly from Stampin' Up! to you. Once you have all your stamping supplies, you're ready to simply sit and stamp with this video as your guide. The kit does have all the creativity for you and you can just simply stamp in the comfort and safety of your home. How do you order your own class to go kit? You can contact me by email or message me here on Facebook. 
My email is provided in this post. There are step-to-step -step details uh, also included in this post uh, of how you can order one. So please let me know if you have any questions. Now, because everyone has different stamp stashes, you may not have some of the products I'm using in this kit. So I will be offering many of these products in what I'm calling add-on list. You can receive a 10% discount on these add-on items with the purchase of the class to go card kit bundle. I will do my best to point out these add-on items in my video today, but they are also listed with this post. It's very important for me to point out, however, the 10% discount will only be available when you send me your order and I place it for you. It is the only way I can give you the discount. Again, if you have any questions about any of this, please do not hesitate to contact me, okay? So with that, let's get stamping. Let me kind of get organized here. All right, when you receive your kit, you will receive supplies that look like this. You will have a piece of Granny Apple Green cardstock for a base that will be pre-scored for you. So go ahead and fold it on there and give yourself a nice crease with the bone folder. You will also receive two pieces of Whisper White, the exact same size, four by five and a quarter. One of those is for the inside. So I'm gonna go ahead and just attach that now with my stamp and seal, which is very sticky. You can hear that sticking to my fingers. I'm really falling in love with this stamp and seal. Okay, so there we have our inside piece. And then you'll also have a square piece of Whisper White, a scrap piece of Bermuda Bay, Here's a piece of that rainbow glimmer paper that includes the yellows and the oranges of the group. And then you'll have a little piece of black strip here, okay? So we're gonna move those aside for right now. I'm also gonna move my card base over here and get it out of the way because we're gonna focus on this other larger piece of Whisper White. And for this, stamp, for this project, I did decide again to use the stamp apparatus. It works so well for this, and I am going to include this as an add-on item to this class again. So if you've not yet picked it up, um, I highly recommend it. It works so well. I've been using it so much lately. So you know when we stamp with it, I like to have something underneath this clear plate here. It just helps that plate be nice and straight across so that uh, when we go to ink up our stamps, we have a nice flat surface. I'm gonna take my Whisper White and I'm gonna pop it right in here where there is a square uh, width here around the edge, okay? I'm gonna pop my magnet just on the very corner of this left and then put this one down here in the middle. Now, I already have pre-attached the sentiments chocolate, coffee, cookies, and cocktails. You remember from my sample card how I had these all uh, lined up on the back to create kind of a nice little background layer here, and that's what we're going to create right now. And the Stamparatus just makes this so easy. I did have to kind of play around a little bit with the uh, moving of the paper and the stamps just because of the width of them. Um, so I'm gonna explain how I did them. Now, if you don't have the Stamparatus and don't wish to obtain it, you can use a block for these. And what I would do is take these stamps, lay them down on your paper the way you want them, and then grab, I feel like the eye clear block would work the best, Come in here, pick them up, and then you would be able to ink them up, stamp, ink them up, and stamp, and do four rows of them there. Now, not all of us stamp perfectly straight, and with this project, it's not absolutely necessary that you stamp straight, but of course, the stamp apparatus does all that for us so nicely and allows us to stamp perfectly straight, okay? So I went ahead and took my embossing buddy over the Whisper White, Again, remember that Stampin' Up! does not sell the embossing buddy, uh, but they are easy to pick up. I do recommend them and I do like them uh, for embossing. 
And then I went ahead and inked that up with the Versamark ink pad. And the Versamark ink pad and the refill would be an add-on item to this class. I'm going to go ahead and press nice and firm. Then I'm going to remove my magnets. Now, I want to work fairly quickly. I'm going to move that up just one little square there. I'm going to come over here and Versamark my words. I'm going to pick up my plate perfectly straight up and down, bring it out and bring it down one notch here. And then I'm going to come over here and I'm going to stamp. Now, I had to play around with these measurements a little bit just because of the width of these words and how they fell. So this is what I ended up coming up with that I thought worked really well to give me four perfect rows of these words, okay? After you stamp two of them, I do suggest that you come over and put your um, white embossing powder over it. You don't want your Versamark ink to dry and I think it's almost too much time then by the time you did your third and fourth one here, okay? So I went ahead and put my embossing powder over that. I would also suggest that you go ahead and you heat that up now, okay? Before you go ahead and do the third and fourth row of them, okay? So I have already heated that up for the sake of time here. So I have my first and second rows there. Now let's get our paper back in here. I remember I started out on that black line I went up one, and now I'm doing the third one. I'm going to go up another one. I'm actually going to put my magnet down in this corner this time, and I'm going to put my magnet up here then to hold that Whisper White piece in there. I'm going to go ahead and take my embossing buddy along the bottom edge here. Go ahead and Versamark my stamp. Sorry if I'm shaking my table. Pick up that plate, come straight out, and come down one more notch here, okay? And then I'm gonna come over and I'm gonna stamp. My ink pad kinda got in the way of my plate there. And press firmly, go ahead, pick that up gently. Remember with photopolymer, it's a little sticky stamp, so you have to kind of uh, go slow or remember that it's gonna stick a little bit more to your paper than just regular ink. Now for our last one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to move it up one more little square. I'm going to attach my magnet there, attach my magnet down here just in the corner because I don't want it to interfere with my stamp. Pick my plate up, move it down one, and then come over here and stamp. Press firmly all around. And then pick it up. I'm going to put my plate back up into its first spot there. Go ahead and pick up my paper. Bring in my embossing powder. Pour it over. Tap off my extra. And then we would go ahead and we'd heat that up with the embossing gun. Okay? And then you will end up with this. So I have four rows of that. those words perfectly lined up down my Whisper White piece of cardstock, okay? All right, so let's go ahead and put our stamp apparatus away for now. We will pull it out again here and use it in a minute. Now, on my sample uh, card here, I had kind of what I call this ombre or shaded look here, where it's a little darker down here on the bottom and it works its way up and is a little lighter. And I achieved that look by using a Stampin' Up! sponge brayer. Okay, so I'm going to pull that in with my Granny Apple Green ink pad and I'm just going to pull a little uh, scrap piece water underneath there. The ink pad and the brayer will be add-on items to this class. I'm going to go ahead and open my ink pad. I'm going to take my brayer and I'm just going to rub it over the top of my ink pad. And then at the bottom is where I want to start because that's where it's going to go the darkest. And I just keep rolling over that and working my way up a little bit, okay? Come back over. You're going to re-ink your brayer again. And again, we're going to start at the bottom. And it's going to we're, we're work our way up. And you can see how I'm already achieving a little bit darker down there at the bottom.
just keep working your way until you get the color that you want. Okay, it's just kind of a nice, interesting way to um, add a little something to your card. Okay, I did do just a light shade up here at the top, so I didn't leave that white. We have obviously that darker as it works its way up. And you can continue to work it as much as you want there until you get the look you like. Okay, I think that looks good. Now... I'm going to actually set that aside for right now, and we're gonna work with these pieces, okay? So, these are the pieces you're going to use to cut out some circles, some accent pieces for this project. And we're gonna be using the Layering Circles Framelits, okay? So, uh, they come in just plain circle cutouts. You also get a scallop, all right? So I just wanted to pull these out so that you can see uh, which sizes I actually used. And this will be an add-on item for this class. And if you don't already have circle dies, these are really, a I feel, a good staple for any stamper to have, or crafter even. So uh, obviously there are four, four scallops, so a total of eight scallop dies here. And we, if you counted one through eight, we are going to use the second to the smallest or the number two scallop die for this project, okay? I'm gonna pull that out. And then when we go over here to the plain circle dies, there are eight sizes in this. So if you counted from one to eight, from smallest to largest, we are going to use the number one, the very smallest, the number two, the second smallest, and we're gonna use number eight, the largest, okay? And then the rest of them we'll save and use for another project down the road, okay? But those are the four that we need for this project. Now, let's talk a little bit about what's gonna go with what. So, your Whisper White square piece, you're going to take the largest circle die and you're going to create a large circle, okay? You also need a piece of copy paper, uh, typing paper. Uh, I actually use some of our blotter, just a nice thin little piece of paper that you're going to cut out that same large circle die. Okay. Then the little piece of Bermuda Bay that you have, you're going to use the scallop circle and the smallest die circle. Okay. And when you go to run these through your Big Shot, you will be able to run both of those together. Okay, you can run them right through at the same time. And you will achieve this here. Okay, this is going to be your scrap that you're going to throw away. You're going to end up with this little border guide. This is going to be extra that you can save in your scrap bin to be able to use another time. But you'll end up with this cute little scalloped uh, edge one. That's what we need. And then... The last one here is your shimmer uh, glimmer paper, and you're going to be using, uh-oh, I think I told you the wrong die. Let's get this right here. So I told you number of the plain circle ones, you need a number one and two. You do not need two. I'm so sorry. You need number four. One, four, and eight. Okay, if you count them from smallest to largest of the circles, you need one, four, and eight. I'm sorry about that. I didn't mean to confuse you. So with this one, you will come over and you'll be able to punch out your circle die and you will end up with that. Okay? All right, so we have all those pieces straight there. All our pieces cut. So let's go ahead and continue to work. So we will kind of push these aside for right now. And let's just work with our circle here, okay? So I wanted to find the center of this circle. And the easiest way to find the center was to take the typing paper one and fold it in half, fold it in half again, and then when you open it, 
you have the perfect center of what you need. Okay, so we're going to line it up with our Whisper White Circle. I'm going to bring in my paper piercing mat, lay this down, take my paper piercer tool, and poke a hole right there where that center is. Okay, and that's really all we used this for. But save this because you use this to make all four of your cards. Okay. Now, once we have that like that, get rid of my paper piercer, bring this one back in. We need to stamp our images on here, okay? This is going to be our little uh, wheel that goes around on the inside here, okay, with our four images. So I have the coffee cup stamp that I'm gonna take and I'm gonna put stamp side down right there on my circle. Then I have the cookie. I'm gonna put stamp side down right next to it. I have the little chocolates here that I'm gonna place over here in the circle. And I'm going to mount the cocktail glass on a separate block. And we're not gonna do that one right at the moment, okay? So save that one. Once I have those all where I need them, I'm going to take my D block, which I think works perfectly for this, come in here, and I'm going to pick those stamps up, and that way I know that they are perfectly placed where I need them on my little wheel, okay? So I'm going to take my Memento Basic Black ink pad and ink those up. and then come in on my wheel and just stamp those right down like that. Remember to give your paper time to soak up the ink. This is also a photopolymer stamp set, so that's why I'm including the mat from the um, Stamparatus in this class because it gives you so, such a better image when you have that to stamp on. Then we're gonna take our cocktail glass. Now, the cocktail glass stem is a little longer than I want it. So it might interfere and catch on one of those other images. So I only wanna ink the glass part of it. I do not want to ink the stem part of it. So I'm gonna take my Memento ink pad and I'm just going to, whichever way, if you wanna take the ink down onto the stamp or if you wanna take the stamp down onto the ink pad, whichever you prefer, but you only want the edge of that ink pad to go to the very bottom of the glass and not ink that whole stem, okay? Now, the cocktail glass is a tight squeeze, but the umbrella has a nice little angle that you can match up with the angle of your circle wheel. It does make it appear that the cocktail glass is a little crooked, not straight, but that's okay. It's very forgiving with this uh, card and this technique. Okay, so go ahead and stamp that in there like that. So notice how I just got that umbrella in, okay? And then your cocktail glass is kind of slightly at a little bit of an angle. Now, to color these in, as I talked about, the stamp set has a beautiful two-step stamping where you can add a shaded stamp right in there on top. I love to color, uh, and so I have blends that I used to color these, so I'll bring those in here. Um, and I don't have all the light and dark shades, however, the blends now come in pairs, combo packs, you have to get the light and the dark shades. So those and these all colors would be included as add-on items to this class, okay? And so I have the uh, light and dark Magenta Madness Bermuda Bay, Granny Apple Green, the pink in this is the Flirty Flamingo, I have the Yellow Daffodil Delight, Calypso Coral, Crumb Cake, and the Soft Suede at the end, okay? So um, I wasn't going to take time to color all these in on this video, but I did want to show you how I colored in the cocktail because I did something just a little bit different with it to give it some fun little shading. I first took the light daffodil delight and I colored 
pretty much three-fourths of the cocktail glass with that. And then take the dark Daffodil Delight and come in here and give yourself, oh, just a little strip across like that. Then I took the Calypso Coral and came in along the bottom and did the same thing. Just gave myself a little strip there lightly along the bottom, okay? Now, I think it looks a lot like candy corn like that, but I want it to blend a little bit more and look a little more like a tequila sunrise drink instead, cocktail. So I took my lightest Daffodil Delight and I went back in here and really worked on those colors, bringing them up and blended and lightened that Calypso Coral a little bit. And it just, I thought, made it really look more tropical, okay? Just like that, all right? Now, for the sake of time, I did go ahead and I pre-colored all these, okay? So these are all set here. So that's our wheel. All right, now the next thing we need to pull back in is our card base. Let's work on our window now. So this uh, piece that we embossed on, our layering piece, is going to have about a quarter of an inch all the way around. And you're gonna pull in that smallest circle die here, okay? And you're gonna pull in your wheel. The wheel is gonna get placed about a half inch to three fourths of an inch down from the top of the card. And right over here on the right hand side at the very edge of the Granny Apple Green card base, okay? Just keep in mind, we need to keep get a sentiment up here, all right? Once you have that placed where you want it, we're going to place this circle die right here. And what we're doing is we're creating uh, the area that we're going to cut out for our window, okay? Once you have that placed up there, grab yourself a piece of washi tape, and I'm just gonna apply that actually to the die and to our layering piece underneath. I'm not gonna push it down onto our wheel piece, okay? I just want it to stick right now to that die and that uh, layering piece back behind. The next thing I want to do is grab a pencil and over on this right hand side, while you're holding this with your left hand in place, I'm gonna come in here about the center of where this circle is here, and I'm just gonna give myself a tick mark that goes both on the layering piece and the Granny Apple Green card base. And you'll be able to see the tick mark that I just made in a minute, okay? Then you'll know what I mean by that. So, holding the die in place gently and carefully, pull your wheel piece out, okay? Just like that. But holding that die right where you wanted it, and now you can press it firmly down to hold it into place, okay? So, you can see my little tick mark here that I made. I just made a pencil mark on this layering piece, and it goes straight across there to the granny apple green piece, okay? And that's important, it goes straight across because you're gonna use those to match up later, okay? All right, now I'm just gonna grab my layering piece right now, and I'm gonna take this over to my Big Shot, and I'm gonna punch out this little circle. So, bear with me. Okay, and this is what we ended up with. We're gonna go ahead and pull that die up and pull our washi tape off very gently. We don't want to rip or pull any of our embossing off. That's why you want to either use washi tape or uh, a very low tack tape. Okay, and there we have created our hole that we need here. Okay, that's gonna be our window for our little uh, wheel. I'm gonna go ahead and get this washi tape off the circle there, and this piece that you cut out, you actually can just throw away, okay? All right, now let's match up our 
tick lines that we made here, the pencil to pencil line here, I am going to open the card like that and I'm going to take that same circle die that I used here and place it over here so that it is centered and that so not quite half, maybe a third of that circle is a uh, place so that it will provide a little cut out there, okay? Now, I when I'm doing something like this, again, I really like the washi tape, all right? Because once I have that exactly where I want it, it's going to not only hold that die in place, but in this circumstance, it's also going to hold these two papers uh, together like this, because I don't want to stick them together yet, okay? But it's going to hold that exactly so that the tick marks are lining up. So again, bear with me. I'm going to take this over to my Big Shot and punch this out. All right, and then gently peel off your washi tape. Get a little edge of it there. And you will have a nice little cutout there on the side, okay? Which is what we need to be able to turn our wheel. All right? Okay, so I hope you're with me. <laughs> uh, I think I'll take an opportunity now to go ahead and attach this. And how I did that was just put a little bit of our multi-purpose glue around the edge. I thought it worked the best. Doesn't take very much. And I'm just gonna attach that right around that edge there. Okay. Now, we need to attach our wheel to this piece, okay? And to do that, I wanna make sure that the windows are, uh, that all of our little images are gonna peek through the window uh, appropriately, all right? Now, remember we poked that hole here in the center, we found that center, and we're going to do that again. We have to have a hole in this piece to be able to attach this piece. I find it best to take my circle, match it up over here, but also I can hold this up in the light and I can see exactly where my image is going to fall with the circle back behind when I hold it up to the light, okay? So I might not be able to do that right here on camera for you all, but I feel like I have that circle lined up back behind when I held it up to the light. Once you have that lined up where you want it, I think I need a little more wheel out here to the right. I'm gonna move it this way just a little bit. There we go. Because you need enough wheel out here to be able to you know, spin it. Once I have that where I want it, I'm gonna take my paper piercer tool in that original hole that I made and I'm just gonna pop another hole down in there, okay? Now I can take and move this back behind and I'm gonna pull in of silver brads. Now, silver brads, uh, Stampin' Up! no longer carries, we used to. Um, I feel like it's a pretty good staple though, a stamp staple that everybody has. Of course, in your kit, you will receive four of them enough to complete these four cards. But you'll go ahead and uh, put your wheel on the back and go ahead and attach it with a brad right there. And this is where you can kind of try everything and see if everything was got included. My coffee cup looks a little high, but I think it's okay. It's all right. I was more focused on getting that umbrella from the cocktail in this one. So, all right. So now we're ready to attach to our card base. And I want to put this up on dimensionals because I want that little wheel to have some room to move back behind, okay? So I'm actually only going to attach dimensionals along this side. I'm gonna be very careful the one I put up here because I wanna make sure that it doesn't interfere with the way the wheel turns. I'm gonna place another one there in the middle 
again, being careful that it doesn't interfere with that wheel. Go ahead and peel off all these extras. And we are ready to attach it to our card base. And I do want to make sure, yeah, there we go. That it is lined up with that quarter of an inch all the way around the edge there, okay? And when you open it here, you still are able to spin your wheel, okay? All right, so let's put the finishing touches on this. So I have my piece of rainbow glimmer paper here, and I am gonna go ahead and pop it up on some dimensionals. Kind of think about how you, what colors you want to show and how you want them to show and where you place your dimensionals. I'm putting them side to side so that that way when I put it in here, the purpose of this not to just be pretty and sparkly is to cover up that brad there. So kind of think about where that brad's gonna lay in proportion with your dimensionals there, okay? But it's kind of a nice way to cover that brad up. Now, our little black piece here that we still have left, I'm gonna bring in the Stamparatus. And I'm going to flip my plate over because you know we have two sides on the Stamparatus that we get to use. And I'm gonna pull in some sentiments here from the set, they are the Today's Plan Consume, and the Because Adulting is Hard. Obviously on your cards, you can use any of the sentiments from the set because you'll have the bundle. Once I have those placed right where I want them on my paper, I reach down with the plate Gently pick them up just like that. I'm going to take my embossing buddy here, give that a little bit there, take my Versamark ink pad, go ahead and press. Gently pick that up. I gave you a little bit longer piece so you're able to grab it over here. You have plenty of space between the edge and the words. Go ahead and pour your white embossing powder over the top of that. And then you will take your heat gun and you will heat that embossing powder. For the sake of time, I've already done that. I have it here. And then I just took scissors and gave myself nice little straight cuts along each edge here. The um, Today's Plan Consume one I popped up on little mini dimensionals. Just place that right up here. And then the Because Adulting is Hard, I actually just took multi-purpose glue. The Glimmer Paper uh, can be very... Uh, it's got a lot of texture and it's things are hard to stick to it so I feel like the multi-purpose glue does a good job sticking to that okay so there you have it which one are you gonna have are you gonna have the cocktail the cookie the coffee or the candies okay so again this class you will make four of the same card interactive card However, the colors will be changed up just a little bit because you uh, are going to get uh, different sections of that rainbow glimmer paper so that you can have all the colors represented there. Uh, and I just think it's a fun little interactive card. So I hope you've enjoyed watching how to make these fun cards uh, with the Nothing's Better Than bundle and consider picking it up. Uh, you can earn this kit for free to be able to make four of these cards uh, and impress all your family and friends. Stay safe out there and take care. Until next time.